Are you looking to transport your motorcycle in your truck by yourself? Are you trying to be self-sufficient and know that you can transport your bike when and where and how you want to? Well, you found the right video. Today, I'm gonna to teach you everything you need to know about transporting your motorcycle with the truck and with the trailer. Let's get into it. Now, full disclosure, this is the method that I use to load up motorcycles in trucks. Your results may vary, but for what it's worth, I haul a motorcycle in the bed of my truck at least once a week to the track, to trails, to motocross, and all sorts of things. There's some subtle differences between a street bike and a dirt bike loading as well that I'm gonna explain to you guys. But let's look over the equipment first. So I wanna let you guys know that all the equipment you're gonna see today is stuff that I actually use. This is stuff I bought with my own money and was not sponsored in today's video whatsoever. This is just the stuff that I use. However, if you wanna support the channel and get this same stuff yourself, hit the links down below to our Amazon affiliate links and you can check out these products. Let's start off with ramps. These are my eight foot folding ramps. These have a nice curve to them as well. I highly recommend you get folding ramps and an arched ramp because that's gonna make the whole process a lot easier. These are the ramps I trust as well too because they come with these nice little locking pins and brackets over here. These are great to get the ramps stuck together and so you can tow them onto the uh, trailer hitch as well, which we will explain to you guys once we have the whole rig set up. So highly recommend these ultra tow eight foot folding ramps for your setup. Next up is the Black Widow front wheel adjustable chalk. This thing's really cool because it locks your motorcycle's front wheel into place. You're not gonna wanna transport your motorcycle without having a front wheel chalk, and this one's the best in my opinion. What's really cool about this is you don't need to drill it into your truck bed. This is adjustable, as you can tell. It's got these legs here that you can extend out depending on the length of your truck bed. So that means that you can put this in, load up your motorcycle and load it out afterwards and you can pop this thing out and use it like a normal truck bed as well. The next bit of equipment are your straps. You're gonna want something that is retractable and adjustable like this strap right here from Rhino USA. I've trusted these for a long time. They have the safety pin right there and a retractable strap is just gonna be great from an organizational and tidiness perspective. I really hate messing with the straps that kind of flow out everywhere. And over the years, I've come to really love these retractable straps. They have a thousand pound working weight limit. So any motorcycle, you're gonna be just fine with these straps right here. Next up, we have a set of towels. This might not be something that you you think of normally, but whenever you're gonna be loading up a motorcycle in the bed of a truck, you're gonna be putting the ramps on your tailgate. And if you don't wanna mess up your tailgate, I really recommend a set of towels or a protector for that tailgate. The other piece of equipment we consider vital are canyon dancers or tank straps. These are really gonna come in handy whenever you're gonna cinch your motorcycle down and you don't wanna run it through the triple tree as we'll show you guys. You have these cup styles over here, or you have the normal style, which is just a little strap that you put through the middle of the bike like that. Obviously, you're gonna need a motorcycle to transport, and this is our demo bike today. This is Aprilia 21660 Factory. We're gonna be getting this bike in the bed of that truck, but you can get entered to win this bike because it's a giveaway motorcycle. Hit the links below to shop.yamini.co, and every dollar you spend is an entry to win this bad boy. As a bonus, we're also gonna be showing you guys how to transport your bike on a trailer in case you don't feel comfortable putting it in the bed of a truck. This is my personal Kendon three rail trailer with this small little ramp that it came with as well. I'm gonna show you guys how to put your bike on this thing as well. There are four considerations you should take into consideration before loading your motorcycle into the truck. And the first one I wanna tell you guys is about the load height on your tailgate. Most modern trucks, for whatever reason, have gotten higher and higher and higher. They're taller and taller. And that's actually worse for loading stuff into your truck, even if you're using your truck as a utility, if you're throwing stuff into the side of it. But most importantly, if you're loading up a big heavy motorcycle from the ramp here. So this is my personal truck here. This is a 2021 Ram 1500 Limited with the air suspension. The reason I got the air suspension is because in its highest setting over here, you can see that this truck height on the tailgate is about 37 inches. Now. I can actually drop this truck and we'll do a little time lapse and I'll show you guys how tall it is then. All right guys, so the truck is lowered and now it is 33 inches. So we went from 37 to 33. That might not sound like a lot, but I'm telling you, standing next to this, it is much more approachable to be able to get a motorcycle onto here. And the angle of approach with your ramps are gonna be a lot more easy with four inches less of height. So if you've got a lower truck, it's gonna be a lot easier. Or if you have a truck with air suspension, make sure you lower it all the way down. The other consideration I wanna talk about is the tailgate itself. I've seen lots of videos online saying that you need to remove the tailgate to transport a motorcycle, that you shouldn't have it on there. Guys, tailgates are pretty strong. This is a steel cable right here holding this thing in place. I've transported 
hundreds of motorcycles in the back of my truck throughout the years, and these have never failed. Uh, I've never seen a tailgate fail. Um, also, any standard five and a half foot bed truck is gonna work to transport a motorcycle because you are actually gonna transport it with the tailgate down. That is also fine. You're gonna have a lot of the weight over here holding the tailgate down, and I've never had any issues transporting with the tailgate down here as well. Your truck's gonna have the lights over here on the side, your turn indicators, all that good stuff, so this is not a problem to transport a bike with the tailgate down. This method also involves riding the motorcycle straight up with the ramps. If you're not comfortable with this, there are other methods in which you walk the motorcycle up using a step ladder system. However, I don't recommend those because you can very easily lose your grip on the bike and it can fall over to the side. If you just ride the bike straight up with two ramps on side-by-sides, it should be a lot easier and anyone can manage to do that as well. But you just have to commit. We'll show you guys how to do that. Last point I wanna make before I show you guys how to actually do this is consider the weight of your motorcycle. I think if your bike's between like a 240 pound enduro bike and a 500-ish pound street bike, you're probably pretty safe to just ride it straight up and get it in the back of the truck. Although I do walk my dirt bikes up because it's a little bit easier. But if you have like an 850 pound Road King or some 600 pound adventure bike, maybe not the best bike to ride straight up a ramp. Although an adventure bike, I'd probably do it myself, but just be mindful of the weight of your machine. For my motorcycles, for example, my Turbo Hayabusa weighs about 550. I usually have that in the back of a trailer, not in the bed of my truck. But my race bike weighs about 360 pounds. I usually put it in the bed of my truck. Now, let's show you guys how it's done. All right, guys, let's get started. So first thing you wanna do is get your front wheel chock into the bed of your truck. Now, as I mentioned, this one's adjustable. You don't have to drill anything, so it just makes the whole thing a lot easier. And you can still use your truck like normal. Um, I often put a cover over the, the bed of my truck and go on road trips with my wife and stuff, so this is a really nice setup to be able to do that. You wanna get this in the middle as possible. As I see right here, it's looking like it's a little to my right, so I'm actually gonna move it a little bit. Try to get the weight nice and centered get the arms extended as far out as possible. And that's nice and in place. One additional thing I like to do here is to grab a ratchet strap and secure the chalk to the truck as well. That's gonna make it a little bit easier when you're backing the bike out of the chalk. Um, this is a really nice thing to do. So not all trucks have this, but for my truck, I just like cinching it right over here on the edge. And that's just gonna give you a little bit more control over when you're pulling the wheel off the front chalk. Now, let's get the ramps on. As we mentioned, what we wanna do is use these towels or any kind of protector on your tailgate. Cause over the years, you can see that even mine, while I was using the towel, is still a little chewed up. My Frontier that I used to have before this Ram was crazy chewed up because it was a beater truck and I didn't really care, but I paid a lot of money for this truck. So I like to keep it as pristine as possible. As you can tell, my towels are definitely a little ratty from years of protecting this sweet tailgate. I like to use two of them just to give myself a little bit of leeway because I like to strap down the ramps really nice. So we've got our towels on there. Now we're gonna set up the ramps. So the ramps you're gonna wanna set up right in the middle of the front wheel chock because you're gonna ride that bike right up into that chock. So basically we're building a loading ramp with these two ramps. And that's why I mentioned to get the eight foot folding ramp and two of them so that you can build that ramp set up. So you put the tongue right there on the tailgate. You grab the other one. You're gonna wanna put it just like that. Now again, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're lined up right here along this line all the way to that front shock because you're gonna ride that bike right up there. Now, here's where the brackets come in handy. As I mentioned to you guys, I love these ramps, these ultra toe eight foot ramps because they come with these little brackets. So what I like to do is I stand on the, on the ramps here, I balance myself a little bit, put the, uh, put the bracket right here in the middle, cinch this down, and then lock it in place with the cotter pin. But that's not enough. That's enough to make the ramps not move side to side. It's not enough to not get the ramps to move off the tailgate. 
This is something I see all the time. Guys use these little skinny ramps. They just put them right on there. They don't secure to the truck. And then disaster happens. When you're loading this bike up, it falls off to the side, the ramp falls to the side. Don't be a statistic, guys. Play this as safe as possible. There's no prizes to win in loading up your uh, motorcycle in the bed of your truck. So use the wide ramps, use the bracket, and then use one of your ratchet straps and attach it to your truck. The way I like to do this, you're gonna take this mouth right here on the ratchet strap, attach it to this part of your trailer hitch, okay? Something sturdy, could be anything you want. I like to attach it right onto there. Then you're gonna back this ratchet all the way to this cotter pin on the end of the ramp. You're gonna pull this into place here, secure it, and then start ratcheting it down. You don't need much, you just need it so it doesn't move. And what that's done is giving me a ramp that doesn't move side to side, and it doesn't move off my truck bed here. Now I've got a really secure system to move my motorcycle all the way up into the truck bed. So I'm gonna show you guys that right now. And again, this system's really great because you can do this by yourself. It's really easy. This is the hardest part, so to speak, but you just have to commit a little bit. So you're gonna mount up on your motorcycle, flick the kickstand up, give yourself a little bit of distance between the ramp. You don't wanna start loading the bike up from right about here because you're actually gonna be using the momentum to get the bike right into where it needs to go. So back your motorcycle up a little bit, give yourself, you know, maybe 10 feet, 12 feet, something like that. You're gonna turn the bike on, and I'm gonna do this all in real time, so I'm gonna tell you guys before I do it. You wanna turn the bike on, put it in first gear, and just feather the clutch and ride it right up. Keep both of your feet to your sides so that in case anything happens, you can just dab the bike really quick and you're still going upright. What you don't wanna do is to not commit and not have momentum while you're going up because then you're gonna have to balance the bike as it comes back down in an awkward fashion. So once you're lined up here, know that your end goal is that front chalk. Look where you wanna go, right? So nothing to it but to do it, baby. Once you get the bike up here, smooth as butter like that, you wanna lock it in the chalk, cut the engine. It's in place now. With this ramp set up and this chalk set up, this bike's not going anywhere. It's in the chalk, it's perfectly fine, and you can start working on cinching it down. You're gonna to wanna to kill the engine, then you can use the nice ramps that you made and walk down over here. And you can start using your Canyon Dancers and your other straps. Now, I didn't mention this in the strap section, but I do recommend getting multiple straps. It's really nice to have at least six straps just in case your straps break or something happens while you're out on the road. It's always nice to have backup straps. I probably have like nine straps in my truck at all times because I've at one point transported four motorcycles with my trailer in the bed of my truck. I'll send a photo to Whitney so she can include it because I'm very proud of the quadruple rig. It was awesome. <sighs> quadruple rig. Quadruple rig. Four bikes, baby. Four of them. Woo. And I sound so old saying that, Whitney. I, I sound like an old man. <laughs> I'm proud of my rig, you know? So what you're gonna wanna do is take each strap and put it towards the ends of the bikes over here. Every truck that I've ever seen pretty much has an attachment hook right over here. We're gonna show you guys in detail how to actually strap this up, but every truck has at least a hook over here. So get a strap over here. These are pretty durable too, so you can just chunk a strap over there. It's not gonna hurt the strap or anything and straps are pretty cheap. Now you're gonna wanna take the cups from your Canyon Dancers and put them on the ends of your handlebars, just like this. This system works by one strap is pulling this way, as you can see, and the other strap is pulling the opposite direction. Now, you're gonna to wanna to take that ratchet strap that we chucked over here and start cinching it down. With the Canyon Dancers, it's really easy, guys. All you do is take this open mouth of the strap over here, put it in, use the pin, and that's it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to do any loops. You don't have to do anything crazy. If you don't have Canyon Dancers, you are gonna to have to do a slightly different setup, and I will show you guys that too. But just gonna wanna attach this 
And again, retractable straps makes the job super easy and just start cinching it down. Now, when you're working on one side of the bike, just cinch it down a little bit until you start seeing a little bit of movement from the bike. Then you're like, okay, that's starting to get locked into place. Then you're gonna wanna work on the other side. Same thing over here, just attach it like this. Use your safety clip, nice and easy. Bring the strap down to the anchor point on the truck, safety clip over there, and begin ratcheting it. That's looking pretty good. Now we're gonna increase the tension on the other side and then just a couple of clicks on the bike. You don't need to absolutely slam the front suspension to make sure that your motorcycle is clipped down. Um, this bike is already feeling like it's not gonna go anywhere, but we have a couple more steps before we're ready to transport. Now I normally recommend Canyon Dancers, but if you don't have them or your bike can't accept them because of a brake lever guard or something like that, you can use the loop method. So you're gonna wanna take the end of your ratchet Find a nice point on the motorcycle. This Aprilia 20660 would be probably in the lower triple here. I would do that, but for demonstration purposes, I'll show you guys up here. You wanna take the loop here, loop it once over like this. Try not to damage any cables or go through any cables. So you'll take your leading strap, put it through the hook, loop it around the hook one more time, and then pull the safety clip around this way. That way you have a nice loop on it. You're gonna to wanna to reduce the slack as much as possible, whatever your fixed point is, because if this is loose, that's not gonna be good. Strengthen it as much as possible and then ratchet it down. But again, I highly recommend getting Canyon Dancers. That's definitely gonna be the way to go. Next, you're gonna to wanna to take the strap that was on the ramp over here and fish it through the rear wheel. I'll show you guys how that's done. So you release the strap over here, pop that off, and again, most trucks have anchor points at the rear here as well. So fish one hook over here and then leave the ratchet strap loose and fish over the top of your rear wheel if you can find a spoke. Now, if your motorcycle uses uh, spoked wheels, don't do this, that's not a good idea. Try to find a point around the rear um, subframe or the seat or the swing arm, but on street bikes like this that have uh, fixed wheels like this and not spoked wheels, uh, this is gonna be just fine. So you'll wanna fish that all the way over and then leave it nice and loose because you're not gonna tighten it just yet. What we're gonna do next is actually get the ramps up next to the bike. Now this is why I recommended getting folding ramps because we're about to fold these ramps up and put them next to the bike all in one tidy system so that we don't have to uh, put the ramps sticking out of the truck or whatever. This is all gonna be a self-contained system, which is gonna be really cool. Take one of your ramps, fold it up. You're gonna to wanna to put the straight side on its edge. Don't put the curved side on the edge because it's gonna be loud as hell while you're going down the road and it's gonna be rattling all around. So make sure you've got the ramp on the non-curved side. Fish it over the strap. Push it center. Tuck it in that corner over there. Now this is a full size truck with a pretty wide bed, but I've done this before in a Nissan Frontier, works just fine. Do the same thing with this ramp. Fold it up, get it on the side that is not curved. It's gonna be that one right there. Now you've got your ramps in your truck bed, really nice. Then you're gonna to wanna to tighten up this strap. So you guys, I've done this hundreds of times and the important thing is to be able to make adjustments. I went on one spoke a little too high. So we wanna go down there to make sure we can get nice leverage over that wheel. And I'll explain why we're doing this in just a moment. Tighten this bad boy up, not too much. Now we can say the things that all dads wanna say that ain't going anywhere. We have two points of contact on the front cinching it down. It's on a front shock and it's got a support in the rear here as well. So this motorcycle is firmly in place of this truck. We can now remove our towels 
Sometimes if you have a longer wheelbase motorcycle, you have to tug on it a little bit. I'd recommend putting the bike into neutral if that's the case. Now, if you want to polish it all off, you can use a tailgate extender. Uh, I do recommend that if you're gonna be putting other accessories in the truck bed, such as gas canister, uh, chairs or anything else for a track day or whatever else you're bringing along with you. It is not necessary, but it is nice. This motorcycle right now won't work because of this tail right here. I actually can't get this extender in place because of the tail. However, if we were to get a tail tidy, this will work just fine. So that's how you get the motorcycle up and transported into your truck. But the big question is, how do we get it down? Well, I'm glad you asked. Now you've arrived at your destination and you want to unload your motorcycle from your truck. There's also a bunch of things you have to consider when you get into this. I'm gonna walk you guys through this. First thing you gotta do is grab your towels because we don't wanna mess up that sweet, sweet tailgate, do we folks? We do not. Trucks are expensive. They're getting more expensive every day. So let's protect our tailgates, shall we? Get the towel down there just like that. I'm gonna start everything in reverse pretty much. So the last thing we did was tighten up this strap. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen the strap at the rear. Pull this out. We have our handy dandy retractable strap. So you press the button and out it goes. Set it down right over here in front of the ball because you're gonna put that strap on the ramps like we did to get it up. So, pull out one ramp at a time. Nice folding ramps. You're gonna to wanna to flip them out like this. Line up that center right with the rear wheel. Put it right there, that's looking good. Gonna do the same with this one. Pull out this ramp right here. Gonna to wanna to line that up right in the center there. Then we're gonna build our ramp one more time. So we'll grab our bracket that we used earlier with the cotter pin. Step on it, balance it to make sure we can get the pin through the middle. You see my foot's right here making sure that this is centered because if I do this, I can't get it through. But if I press it down a little bit with my foot, can actually squeeze this, get it right there through the middle, put the pin into place, that's set there. Then I'm gonna get the strap onto the ramp, extend this out, attach it to our truck, take this leading hook here, put it on the bracket, pull that close, do that, and then you're gonna to wanna to tighten this. Tighten that so it's nice and steady. Now we've built a ramp, isn't that nice? Whenever you undo the straps up here at the front, there's really nothing to it. You can pop the straps right off, the bike's not gonna go anywhere because it's on the front chalk. So you can go ahead and pop this. You see the bike has a little bit of movement, don't worry about that, it's not a problem. You can set that strap aside. Go to the other side, do the exact same thing. Undo that, pull it off the side. We can go ahead and pull our Canyon Dancers off of the motorcycle, easy peasy. Can set it down wherever. Now, to unload the motorcycle from the truck, you gotta be careful, first and foremost. If you're doing this by yourself and you don't have a buddy looking over your shoulder and stuff, you gotta be careful when you're doing this. If you loaded the bike up, it's gonna be in first gear. So the first thing you wanna do is pop it into neutral. That feels like second gear because it's an Italian bike. That's first gear. That's neutral. Okay, Aprilia, what are you gonna do? Now, you're gonna pull on this motorcycle to release it from the front chalk. That can take a little bit of energy and effort and you're gonna wanna feather the front brake while you do that. That way the bike's not gonna be going anywhere. When you yank on this motorcycle, the last thing you wanna do before you have full leverage over it is have it just careen down the ramp. That's not gonna be a good time. So I'm gonna show you this in real time. I'm gonna yank on this bike, feather my brake as I'm pulling it off of there so I have full control over it. So we pull, hold the brake, pull, hold the brake, pull, hold the brake, pull, hold the brake. Bike is off the chalk. 
Give it a little shimmy, because sometimes in hotter weather, that tire can stick to the metal. Shimmy it loose a little bit, and we are free. Now at this stage, before the motorcycle starts going to the ramp and falling off the edge, you're gonna wanna straddle the bike and do it in reverse like you did to get it up there. So swing a leg over the machine, straddle it like this, and then watch your back. Make sure the motorcycle is nice and straight, have both feet down, and then feather the brake as you come down. This is gonna require a little bit of balance, so you're not gonna wanna be an uncoordinated duck and just have the motorcycle flop over. Feather your front brake. Don't let go of this front brake until you have the motorcycle fully on planet Earth once again. So, walk it down, feather the brake, and at some point in the middle of the ramp, it's gonna let go. You watch it, and you are done. Bike is set, kickstand down, and you're out of there, baby. Bike is back on planet Earth. You've transported it successfully wherever it needed to go, and you did it all by yourself. The procedures to get everything back in the truck are pretty self-explanatory. You're gonna undo the strap, fold up the ramps, stow everything away as needed. But that's how you transport a motorcycle to and from your location in the bed of a truck. Now, you might be asking, Yam, what if I've got a really tall truck, I wanna use a trailer instead? Well, I'm glad you asked. So if your truck is too tall or you don't wanna mess around with putting a motorcycle in the bed of your truck, you can always use a trailer. As I mentioned, this is my personal Kendon three rail stand-up trailer. As the name implies, it stands up, which is really easy for storage. Now, using a trailer is very, very easy. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I'm still gonna walk you guys through it. So for this one, you actually pull this trailer down, comes off the caster wheels, and then you can move this thing around no problem. So we're gonna move the trailer all the way over to where the ball mount is. Whitney's giggling because she thinks the words ball mount are very funny. So you set the trailer onto the ball mount right there onto the receiver, pop it into place, lock that down just like that, and you start setting it all up. So trailers have light systems that you'll need to plug up. Most trucks use a universal three pin like this or four pin, I guess, rather. You pop open on your uh, truck and you can pop that in just like that. That's gonna give you your indicators, your turn signals, um, your brake lights, all that good stuff you need to put on a trailer. Most trailers also have a backup safety system. So this one uses this braided steel line here in case anything happens with the receiver. Now, while I do this, I did wanna mention that pretty much any car can tow a motorcycle. They're pretty lightweight and you can honestly get away with towing with just about any car. Guys in Europe do this all the time, even though our cars here in America, um, they say they're not rated to tow anything. If you can get a hitch on your vehicle and you can get a ball mount attached to it, that's a two inch that's gonna work for a trailer like this, I say go for it. You're not gonna damage the vehicle by towing a four or 500 pound motorcycle. That's not much weight at all. And honestly, again, I've seen guys in Europe with little one liter cars uh, towing motorcycles and all kinds of other stuff. But be careful, you know, towing something has its own considerations. When you actually have something attached to the back of your vehicle, you have to brake a little bit earlier. You have to consider the handling of your vehicle a little bit and be mindful in tighter situations. Um, now, this trailer is really cool, as I mentioned, it's a lightweight stand-up trailer. So you can see, I actually put this trailer at a bit of an angle. If I wanna move it, all I gotta do is just scooch it over, just like that. It's really not that heavy. Even a guy like me who does not hit the gym ever, as you can tell my svelte cycling physique, I can move this thing over no problem. Now, getting a motorcycle onto the trailer, you can see that this Kendon three rail as the name implies, has three rails and three chocks. Now, these chocks are a little bit wi wibbly wobbly as opposed to the chalk that we have in the bed of the truck. I find these chocks to be a little bit peculiar. So, you're gonna wanna make sure your trailer deck is ready. This one flips out and then you can get a ramp. This one actually comes with an integrated ramp, which is pretty cool. It has this little round mouth right there. That you hook onto the end here and slot into place. Now that's not gonna move, and you notice, the whole thing of the game here is load height. See how low to the ground this is? This is maybe, maybe 18 inches off the ground. That's gonna make it so much easier to load, and you don't have to ride the motorcycle up. I actually don't recommend that you ride on a tiny little ramp like this. But without further ado, let's get our motorcycle, let's walk it up here and show you how it's done.
Now, sometimes when I'm loading up a motorcycle in the trailer, I'll actually turn the bike on and use the bike's power to get it up there. It makes it a little bit easier. But for this demonstration, I'm just gonna power the bike up in neutral and just get it up into the chalk and show you guys how it's done. Before I do that though, I wanna make sure since I'm doing this by myself, that I have my straps in place and ready to go before I actually get the motorcycle onto the chalk. So we're gonna put one on this side, right over here near the pivot point, right over here near this anchor point here. Don't know why I called it a pivot point. It does not pivot, it's an anchor point. So just like the ramps, you're gonna wanna give yourself a little bit of runway, pull your kickstand up, back the bike up and send it on up. Now, as I mentioned, when the bike is up here on this particular uh, chalk, you notice how it's just wanting to fall over a little bit. That's because, again, this chalk is not the greatest thing in the world. Once this motorcycle's up here, you're gonna follow the same procedures as you did in the bed of the truck. Get your candy dancers on, cinch it down, make it nice and tight, put the rear on as well, and then your bike is not gonna be going anywhere. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video on how to get a motorcycle on a trailer in the bed of your truck, transporting it by yourself. Leave me any comments down below if you have any questions about how to transport your motorcycle. I hope you learned something today. And remember, this Aprilia is a giveaway motorcycle. Head over to shop.yamity.co if your dollar you spend is an entry to win. We'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Keep watching. Watch, 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 watch.